Long and difficult journeys can be a struggle. Tiredness sets in, the perception of obstacles and dangers can increase, and the temptation can become to cut the journey short. I'm sure that the friends of Jesus travelling with him to Jerusalem felt this, particularly given the knowledge of the great danger which Jesus had said laid at the end of the journey. Yet still Jesus would travel on and the call to these, his friends, would be to keep on going with him. Welcome to our fifth reflection in this season of Lent and I greet you from Nungnawal country, paying my respects to the people and culture of the first peoples and traditional custodians of this land. As we enter into the final weeks of our Lenten journey and our Lenten reflections, we are reminded that crucial to reaching the end of the journey is the simple act of keeping on. A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 11, beginning at verse 7 through to 27, then 38 to 44. Then after this he said it to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus! Come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Cartoonist and poet Michael Lunig has a poem, How to Get There. This poem is a simple invitation to journey. How do you get there? Well, you, you start, you go out of the gate and you start the journey. You rest every now and then and appreciate the beauty of the flowers, but ultimately you keep on going. That is how you get there. Over this season of Lent, we have been reflecting upon the journey of faith. 
as Jesus journeyed in the wilderness reflecting upon his calling and facing the realities of the struggles and temptations that would confront him. So we have been invited to reflect upon our discipleship. What does it mean to be those who answer the call of Jesus to take up the cross and to follow him? In this time, we have reflected upon our journey being formed in our new sense of identity as those born of the Spirit, as the people of God. We have thought about how Jesus is the living water who sustains us through our journey and how Jesus is the light of the world in which we walk. As we approach the end of this season of Lent and in our gospel accounts, which we've been listening to as we approach Jerusalem and the cross, we discover that Jesus is the one who has gone before and who we continue to follow to the journey's end. It's a bit like what Lunig said, how do you get there? You keep on going. The thing with following Jesus though, is that the end of the journey is also a new beginning. When Jesus announced that he was on his way to Judea, a place everyone knew would be extremely dangerous for him, Thomas said, let us also go that we might die with him. Thomas had answered the call of Jesus to follow and here he was ready and willing to keep on going. For to give up our life for the sake of the gospel is indeed the call of Jesus. Yet in this story, we are again surprised with both the announcement and the reality of resurrection. In Jesus, the new life of God's commonwealth of peace flourishes. We have already heard that it will be only come as Jesus offers his life for all creation. In the raising of Lazarus from the grave, we discover the reality of this new life ever present with us and amongst us. As followers of Jesus, we seek the realisation of God's commonwealth of peace. We seek to see the life given in Jesus flourishing amongst us and around us. But this commonwealth of peace, this new flourishing life requires us to follow Jesus to our journey's end. To stay true to the journey that in our everyday taking up of the cross and following Jesus, so the resurrection life that we have in Jesus abounds. This is our calling. This is the life we are to live, the life we are to share and the life we are to give. And at each moment along the way, we discover the resurrection life that is ours in Christ. All that is asked of us is that as we started, so we keep on going. Amen.
as we continue with our journey in life and in faith, we do so in trust of God who is with us and is in that vein that I offer a journey prayer of the Celtic tradition. Let's pray. Bless to us, O God, the earth beneath our feet. Bless to us, O God, the path on which we go. Bless to us, O God, the things we see, the sounds we hear, the scents we smell. Bless to us, O God, our thoughts, our speech, our company as we share this journey. Bless to us, O God, our goal and grant strength that we may stay faithful to this journey, following ever in the way of Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of faith who has travelled this journey to its finish before us. Amen. Keep on going and know God shares your journey, regardless of where you may travel, in every destination, in every encounter, in every struggle, in every joy, in every moment and every step. God is with you and the blessing of God is upon you. Amen.